Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, I'm here again at Southview Lodges, a couple of sort of holiday luxury lodges uh, just outside of Exeter, here on a few days away with my uh, wife and children. Uh, highly recommended actually, check out uh, southviewlodges.co.uk and if you book up, tell them I sent you so that maybe they'll give me uh, a discount next time I come because we'll certainly be coming back. A uh, beautiful spot and we've had fantastic weather which helps, doesn't it? Uh, there's even a hot tub, fabulous. Um, I'm going to uh, continue talking about how to work with an advisor and I'm going to give you five questions you should ask and get good answers to before you decide to instruct an advisor to work for you. Before we get into that though, as ever, uh, I should thank my good friends at Seven Investment Management in London who sponsor the show. So thanks very much chaps and chapesses. So financial advice in this country is regulated, rightly so. Um, because money is important to everybody and it's important to make right decisions about it. So the first question you should ask any prospective advisor, um, <coughs> excuse me, little frog in the throat, is are you regulated by the Financial Services Authority? Now the answer to this one should be an immediate yes, um, because if they're not regulated they're advising you illegally, okay, so make sure this is a yes. Um, now there is a way you can check out uh, that before even you see an advisor and frankly <laughs> you should do this anyway. So this is a question to ask an advisor but really you should ask it yourself before you even go there. Right? You need to check out the FSA register, I'll put the, uh, the link to it along the bottom here, uh, which will be good because it will hide my knees very briefly. Okay, So check out the register, do a search for the firm or for the advisor's name, but be careful because you know there might be a lot of uh, advisors with the same name as yours. The uh, best way is to check the firm, okay? And there's a few links on there, like who you know, which advisors work for them, whether they've had any disciplinary history or anything like that. So it's a good idea to check that out before you see an advisor. All right. So are you regulated? Check out the FSA register, or just ask them and see if you can get a good answer out of them. Second question you should ask is what are your qualifications, right? Now we dealt with this last time. There's a whole alphabet soup of advisor letters after their names and qualification levels. Remember, really you want at least level four. That will become the minimum as of the end of next year, or the beginning of 2013 really. Okay, that's diploma level, okay? But above that is chartered and certified financial planners. Uh, those are the ones who have achieved the highest levels of qualifications, all right? So you want to know that your advisor is qualified to a sufficient level, okay? Because uh, notwithstanding the fact that it's going to become uh, the minimum standard, those who have already attained level four and even better have already attained chartered and certified are obviously those who take the, their uh, profession seriously and are not doing the bare minimum uh, just to get through, okay? So ask any prospective advisor what their qualifications are, okay? Qualifications though is one thing, but what about experience? You need to ask any advisor what your experience is. Um, particularly if you are going to see an advisor with a particular need. Uh, sorry, just somebody walking past over there. You know, let's say you particularly want to sort your pensions out or you're really concerned about what happens to your estate after, your, after you die. You wanna know that the advisor you pick is experienced and knowledgeable in that area. There's so many exams that an advisor can do to attain a particular level, it is actually possible for them to get to a certain level without sitting any exams in a particular field. And I am the example of that. I'm very close to being a chartered financial planner, uh, but I've yet to sit a single exam on pensions, okay? I loathe pensions. <laughs> uh, somebody wants to come to see me about pensions, I pass them on to my colleague, Roger, because that's his thing, all right? So check your advisor is experienced in the particular area you want to see him about, or just experience generally. Because as I said last time, qualifications is one thing, but I work with uh, three guys who are not as qualified on paper as I am, but who have 40 years experience each and are superb advisors, extremely knowledgeable. Um, I may have more qualifications, but to be honest, it's relatively meaningless in the light of their experience. So experience trumps qualifications in my book, uh, but qualifications are uh, incredibly important in the eyes of the regulator. So ask about them both, okay? So number three is what is your experience? Number four, essential one, this is how will you get paid? 
right? Any advisor these days will probably give you a choice. It'll either be by commission, so if they recommend you take out a product, they will get paid by the product provider, okay? Or it'll be by some kind of fee basis, maybe an hourly rate like a solicitor might charge you, um, or a case fee. If there's something that you want them to do for you, they may say, yes, I will do that and I will charge you this much flat fee. Um, or maybe a combination of both. Maybe, yes, we'll charge you a flat fee, but if there's some commission payable, we'll take it off the fee and just charge you the difference. So f find out how your advisor is gonna get paid. Um, it's really important, this. The Retail Distribution Review, which I'm gonna talk about next time, um, blows this wide apart again. Commission will essentially be abolished from the 1st of January 2013 and will be replaced by something called advisor charging which means that you and your advisor will have to agree a cost for whatever work they're going to do for you up front. Okay? This is absolutely the way it should be done, um, and it's a good thing, um, but it's going to be a huge challenge to many advisors who are used to being paid commission when they flog you something. Okay? Maybe that flogging you something is absolutely the right thing to do, and there's nothing wrong with commission per se, um, but it is responsible, I believe, for a lot of the ills in the financial advice world. Um, advisors being swayed by high commissions when a lower commission paying product would be better for the clients okay but abolishing commission gets rid of all that um, and it's a good thing so ask your advisor how they're going to get paid and make sure you know what you're going to pay up front before you have to pay it um, and you'll be fine okay and get it in writing it should be part of something called their terms of business which is a document that any advisor should give you at the first meeting okay finally question number five is do you have any connection with any company whose products you may recommend, okay? Um, best example of this, again, uh, perhaps not the best, but a good one, is myself. Because Meaningful Money is separate from my regulated company, which is Jackson's Financial Services in Penzance. Check them out, they're really good. But Meaningful Money is sponsored by Seven Investment Management because their logo is down there, see? Now, if when I'm at Jackson's advising a client, I recommend seven investment management to them. There are a million good reasons why I would do that, um, uh, which I won't uh, go into here now because it's not really uh, the time or the place. But it's important that I would disclose to that client that 7IM pays me some money to do meaningful money. So, you know, that's <laughs> it's important that the client knows that so that everybody's sort of clear exactly where they are. Now, it's easy for me to, to do that because I've been recommending clients go to Seven Investment Management for six years and the sponsorship thing's only been in place for about a month. So it's easy enough to do. But ask the question, are you in any way connected with a provider whose products you may recommend? The um, uh, FSA sort of uh, disciplinary record is littered with examples of advisors who have been recommending products of companies with whom they had some sort of uh, secret arrangement. Maybe they were on the board even or something like that, you know, sort of separate uh, distribution companies and they would recommend that their clients did these products because they got sort of two slices of the pie, if you like. All very underhand and dodgy. So make sure you ask that question, all right? So are you regulated? What are your qualifications? What is your experience? How will you get paid? And are you connected with any of the companies uh, whose products you might recommend? Five good questions to ask, all right? So from Southview Lodges, um, that's it for this time. Uh, seriously, check them out, southviewlodges.co.uk, <laughs> and maybe I will get that discount yet. Next, I'm going to talk about what the retail distribution review is, uh, is and what it means for advice, uh, particularly for you getting advice. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.